Welcome to the Pirate Handyman, where we help you to become more self-sufficient and how to save coin for your treasure chest. If you dig what we're doing here, you join our crew. Hit that subscription button down below and then hit that ship's bell and you'll be notified every time we have a new tip coming up. Now, this week what we're going to talk about is a giant extension cord and how we can save it and not have to worry about going out and buy a new one. So let's go into the shop. All right, so what we've got here is a long extension cord that is no longer working. <clears throat> and we can see right here, this is starting to, to come loose. But that's probably not what the problem is here. <laughs> um, this got cut, tried to splice it. Uh, chances are that it's somewhere in, in here where we spliced it. And being so close to the end, it probably wasn't a good idea. So the tools that, that we're going to need here, um, this is called a VOM, uh, voltage ohm meter. We're going to use this to check continuity here in a minute. Then we're going to need a pair of uh, needle nose pliers. Got uh, two different ones here. Uh, some wire cutters and then a wire stripper and Sometimes, if you don't have one of these, then we're going to use an X-Acto knife. And here's the X-Acto knife. Then, this is a new end that we're going to put, put on it right here. Now, since this is an outside extension cord, you want to make sure that it's... Uh, nothing is ever waterproof with something like this, but that it's water resistant. And that it has this clamp. And this clamp is real important because you don't want to be putting pressure on the screws that are inside here. So, first thing we're going to do is take this apart. You can see on this particular one there's just three screws. Make sure these are loose. I'm going to leave them in their little holes here. Now you can see we've got three prongs in here that we're going to need to uh, put the wires to. So we're going to set this over to the side for a second. Now we're going to take our wire cutters and we're going to cut this off back here. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to put it through because we want to measure, because we want to make sure that this clamp is actually going to be holding here and not holding any of the exposed uh, wires, even though they are insulated. So, we'll push it through. You need to loosen it a little bit here. So now even though it's right, it's through there, I'm going to do something here to make sure that we've got enough wire. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to mark this and this is going to be my clamp line. And then I'm going to go just above that clamp line. And make a soft cut with the X-Acto knife. Now I don't want to cut. You can also use a uh, razor blade if you have one. But you want to make sure you don't cut too far into this because what will happen is the uh, you might accidentally cut the insulation on one of the inside wires, and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to pull this back off. Now, if I bend this, you can see that cut opens up, and I'm just going to use the X-Acto knife, just kind of 
push it. You can see it's opening up the where I've cut. I can pull this off. Now I'm going to take this nylon that is in here. This is basically just to help keep everything tight. And use my cutters here and cut these off. There, now I've got my wires. So let's push back through here, and it should be easier this time. Remember, I've got my clamp line mark there. <clears throat> All right, so with clamp line marked, now I can see where these are going to go. Pull it back out. Now, to, um, to strip this, there's two ways you can do this. You can do it with the, uh, with the X-Acto knife, the way we did it before. Or, if you have a cool piece of uh, equipment here, this is a, uh, a wire stripper. And if you work with wire a lot, this is a good investment. Now, you want to make sure you don't get it in too small of a hole. The directions will kind of tell you what to do. And then you just spin it around a couple times and it comes off. Now we have to determine what's going to go where. In this one, we're kind of uh, given a little bit of help in that you can see this is black may be hard to see here. This is green and then the top of this screw is just brass. Now generally in electronics green is going to be ground. The hot is going to be usually white and the uh, the common is going to be uh, black. So that's what we've got here. Now we can test this out to make sure that we've got continuity by using the, uh, the VOM. So what we're going to do is we've got this set to ohms. And we turn over here to the R times 1 setting. Now you can see Basically, when I put these together, you can see I've got continuity. So, I'm going to check here. And if I hold it on the bottom one, that should be my green. So I touch my green. There, I've got my continuity. Now, I'm going to touch the other ones just to make sure I don't have a short. Because if you get continuity with any of these other ones, then it means you've got a short someplace else. So, I know that my green is going to be the ground. All right, so the, it's going to have to go the same way, correct? So, this is the upper left, upper left. So, this should be my white. There we go. Then when I put it on this side, that means my black should be there. And there's my black. All right, so now I'm gonna push these back through. There, I've got my clamp. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this off right now. And I'm just gonna be tightening these screws. 
You want to make sure you get this good and tight because that way, now, <clears throat> I want to mention here, and I'm sure you all know this because somebody has probably yelled at you at one time or another if you've been around anybody like me, but you never pull on the cord to unplug it from the wall or whatever it's plugged into. You always do it from here. But if this happens to get caught on something, this clamp right here is going to keep you from pulling anything loose in here. Now, we want to use the screw direction here to help us in, in tightening these up. So what we're going to do, if you remember to tighten it, you're going to go clockwise. So we're going to wrap the wire clockwise. And because this is a, a braided wire, we want to turn it as much as we can that way. We want to make sure we get outside of this clip because this is where the male part is going to push in. And we need to loosen the screw a little bit. So we're going to wrap that around. Then we're going to take our needle nose pliers. Braids came untwisted. So I will retwist them. Push them down like this. Use my needle nose pliers to pull it all the way around. Now you notice I've got a couple of braids that are hanging loose over here. So I want to get those pushed in. I can push those around. And then as I tighten it, the motion of the screw is going to help to push that down. Put my finger in there and kind of give it a little bit of help. And there we go. Okay, so once I've got it cut, I want to twist the braided wire so it'll go through here easily. Push it through, down to the mark that I had. Make sure we tighten this up. All right, so now we're gonna take our green wire, pull it around the screw here. Use a screwdriver to kind of push it around. Tighten her up. Okay, so next is going to be our black or our white. Now, this is going to have a lot of extra on here, and we really don't want that. So what I'm going to do is pull it around, and I'm going to cut off about this much, because otherwise we're going to have a whole lot of that sticking out, and that can be a hazard. Take our needle nose pliers. screwdriver and push some of this down just to make sure we get it underneath there. And take our needle nose again. Pull it around so we get a nice tight loop. A couple of braids sticking out there. Push it around. screwdriver. Tighten that up. And now we're left with the black. So we're going to do the 
the same thing. We're going to pull the black over. Got a little bit extra that we don't need. So we're going to trim that off. it tight with our needle nose pliers now tighten it down and there we go so now we're going to use our VOM here again just to make sure that we've got continuity and no shorts. So we're gonna check the ground. And this time I'm gonna go to the poles. There we go. And if I go to the other one, not seeing any shorts. So now I'm going to go to the hot side. Sorry, the common side. See, we've got continuity and no short. And then we go to the hot side, got continuity, and no short. So now take one last gander, make sure we don't have any little pieces of wire sticking up, and we don't. We've got our clamp tight. So now we just have to put the face of it back on. Tighten our screws down, and this is this type of plug is about as sealed as you can get for a replacement. So you want to make sure you get the screws down so it's the front part and the back part will seat correctly. And there we go. We've got it all back together. So we've got a just a couple dollar part that is saved. Oh, this is probably between a. 25 30 foot um, extension cord and these as you know if you've checked the prices on them these can be pretty expensive so we've just saved you a whole lot of coin thanks for joining us again on the pirate handyman where we teach you how to become more self-sufficient and save coin for your treasure chest once again if you dig what we're doing hit that subscription button down below and join our crew and don't forget to hit that ship's bell and that way you'll be notified every time a new tip comes up Here's to smooth sailing.